how many of you graduated from the, the 12th standard or came out of school 20 years ago? Okay, so let's stay with this majority here. Were you offered two options? And you know what the typical Indian options are? Do you want to be a doctor or an engineer? Right? That were the typical options. So that's where this debate was born. In the basic psyche that you have to choose either medicine or engineering. But the world has moved. You have crossover doctors like Dr. Ganapati who started as clinicians and are moving the other side to, to do and to use technology. And you have engineers who are going into medicine or learning and speaking with expertise whether it's on myocardial infarction or the entire realm of care. So very, very clearly, the protagonists on stage, as well as all of you heroes in the audience, do not need to take a decision, luckily. You did not want to choose a side because luckily you do not need to take a decision. Medicine and technology are two ends of the very same coin and the journey is in fact the very same, and that is towards better healthcare for people. It is not who you are, it is what you are trying to achieve. And what we're trying to achieve is the common goal, whether you're using technology or the scientific knowledge. Of course, if, was a, if I was having an MI, would I want, to, uh, would I want uh, an iPad or Steve Jobs, most latest, most supreme, or would I want a cardiologist? The choice is very simple. But life itself does not offer us black and white scenarios all the time. And the realm of technology and the realm of science is indeed so complex. I grew up learning from a cardiologist who had the same experiences to say that we were trained by people who would walk into the room, touch the patient, breathe, smell, ask three questions, and figure out what they needed. But the world has gone beyond. The complexities of the disease are so much more. And the other day, we had one of our CEOs, very senior person, was perfectly fine, has diabetes that he monitors once a month. Uh, besides doing his glucose levels, because he's anyway drawing his blood, he sends out for a complete blood picture, including a CBC. And it's free, he doesn't have to pay for it. So he sends it out. And the CBC showed three abnormal cells. And the doctor picked it up and said, you know, a little bit of neutropenia, do a bit more testing. Again, white blood cell count up, would you do a bone marrow? Saw that, and there, out of the blue, from an extremely healthy person, just completed a trip abroad, they say, AML. Can you imagine that you're giving a diagnosis of cancer to someone who's working 12 hours a day, super busy, etc. And he says, okay, I'm going to beat this thing, I'm going to fight it, I'm getting admitted tomorrow, I'm choosing the best doctor in the room, and I'm going to start chemotherapy day after tomorrow. So, you're super brave, let's go for it. But for a minute, I mean, we completely fabulous doctor, for a minute we said, okay, this is one of the best, can we ask three people? So we called three doctors, and three doctors actually recommended three different protocols and said, this is outstanding, this is fabulous, I've used this, and this is super good, we will make sure he's fine. We can't give the same man three protocols, we have to make a choice. So we had to start analysis. Whose papers, which protocol, long-term efficacy, complete remission rates, which is the cell count, what is the cardiotoxicity of this treatment? The complexity of science today needs the combination of the clinician's brain, the human's heart, the CEO's intelligence to say we need to collaborate, and finally, the, co the entire ecosystem to make that person better. But at the core and the heart of that whole treatment, who became most important? Was his wife who stopped going to work and stayed in the room, and his daughter who gave up her job in America and said, I'm gonna fly down to India and spend time with you. Life is complex, the world is evolving. And we are luckily a group of millennials and slightly older who are living in a world where we don't have to think of life without technology. The only question we have to ask ourselves 
is which technology, how do we collaborate to learn from each other, how do we move fast enough, because every minute that we don't, somebody is denied care. And that is the, those are the only decisions we have to take. The fact that once in a while we step back to debate is superb, because it leads us to again reiterate the fact that we need the clinician's mind, we need the human's heart, we need a constant pursuit of a better solution because however good one may appear, it may not be the best. And ultimately, it's dialogue, dialogue like today, dialogue like the tumor board on a cancer care, which leads to the best care of the individual. So let's continue to debate, let's continue to pursue a better world, and thank you so much for a lot of fun.